Welcome, this is 49J4 and this is uh, Kirchhoff's rules for, sim for, for resistors, uh, circuits involving resistors, sometimes called Kirchhoff's, some people say Kirchhoff's. Um, it's a method, it's a method of analysing circuits. Um, it's a way of bookkeeping. When you have circuits, um, we need to keep track of uh, how the EMFs are balanced by the potential differences and we need to keep track of uh, how currents behave at junctions and so there's two uh, um, uh, uh, rules the junction rule says the sum of the currents entering a junction in a circuit must equal the sum of the currents leaving that junction it's simple enough you, you can't create current at a junction it's just the connection of wires and you can't lose current at a junction it's like cars don't disappear in in a highway system because they get to a, a crossroads they they might go down different routes but they don't disappear same thing goes with with uh, charge carriers so the current in must equal the current out and then there's a loop rule and the loop rule says the sum of the EMF and potential differences across all elements around any closed circuit loop must be zero. The EMF you create must be used up by the potential difference. And so we're looking at just uh, uh, trying to get our, our, our uh, signs right on these and so we have a sign convention. And what we do is we decide on a current direction and what we can say is that um, my current flows from the positive to the negative okay that's fair enough and I have a, a loop this is a imaginary loop this is not the current flow this is just a loop I chose to draw it's a bookkeeping loop and basically as far as voltages and EMFs are concerned if the loop leaves the battery by the positive terminal it's a positive EMF and if the loop leaves the battery by the negative terminal it's a negative EMF and that's fine because just as we flip the EMFs we will actually by the same rule flip the potential difference sign for the potential differences we look at the direction of the current flowing through a resistor and we look at the direction of the loop passing through a resistor and if they are in the same direction then it's going to be a negative potential difference across that resistor and if we look in this case if we have a current flow in that direction through the resistor and my loop is going in the opposite direction through the resistor I have a positive potential difference. Can you see that I had a positive EMF with a negative potential difference because I did my loop one way and I had a negative EMF with a positive potential difference because I drew my loop the other way and I don't care as long as one as long as the EMFs don't have the same sign as the potential differences everything's fine because yeah what you the voltage that you create in the battery you use up you apply across the uh, components is a very typical example now notice two power supplies it's just it, this was developed when you got circuits which were more complicated than the simple circuits we had before. And so analysis of this using simple circuit analysis gets a bit difficult. So people said, let's just make a, a bookkeeping method. And it's called Kirchhoff's Rules. And the first job is we have to decide on the direction and the name of the current's at either one of these junctions. So I'm going to say, because of force of habit, I'm going to say that's I1. I'm going to say that's I2. 
these are going into the junction and I'm going to draw one coming down here and that's I3. Now the junction rule says the sum of the currents at a junction equals zero. So what that says to me is I1 which is going in plus I2 which is going in equals I3. Because of the way I drew my diagram, I didn't look at my power supplies particularly, as it turns out, with the way this diagram is drawn. That's a good, good guess for I1, a good guess for I2, but I didn't look at those. I just arbitrarily picked three directions of current and three names. And I wrote the correct equation down that goes with my diagram. And then the next thing I need to do is pick a loop direction. And I always pick clockwise. Don't know why. I just always pick clockwise. Don't care about the direction of the, of the, 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 the orientation of the, of the batteries. Don't care. I just always pick clockwise. And the junction rule says... The sum of the voltages in a loop equals, I'm sorry, the loop rule says the sum of the voltages in a loop equals zero. So I've got two loops that are clear here. There's also a loop around the outside, but we'll just take these two loops in the, in the middle here. And I'm going to say for the left-hand loop, left-hand loop. I'm going to say, well, that loop is leaving the battery by a positive, so that's plus six is my EMF and then I've got to add and then that current is flowing to the right through I3 maybe I need to get this this so this current is flowing to the right through I3 and so is the junction and so is the loop so that means that I'm gonna turn around and say that's gonna be a negative 3 I1 it's negative because those two directions are the same. It's 3 because it's 3 ohms. And it's I1 because that's what I call the current in that bit of wire. And then down here, I have another bit of wire. And again, down here, I'm looking and my current is in the same direction as the loop. So that's going to be a negative. It's 7 ohms and it's I3. So this is going to be minus 7i3 and this equals 0. Didn't mean to do it in blue, it just the way it turned out. Okay, let's look at our right hand loop. Right hand loop. Again, I look at my loop. It's leaving this battery by the negative. So that's going to be a minus mine minus 9 volts. Uh, the loop is rising through the 7 but the currents descending through the 7 so they're in opposite directions so I'm gonna say plus I'm gonna say plus 7 I 3 and then I look at the 5 ohm resistor and I see the loop goes to the right but the current goes to the left and so I'm going to say plus my uh, plus 5 I 2 is equal to 0 so just check those that nomenclature if the current is in the same direction as the loop, you get a negative potential difference. If the current is in opposite direction to the loop, you get a positive EMF uh, potential difference. And we look at the sign of the EMF based on the terminal that our loop leaves by. Um, I want to solve this. I want to find I3. I3 is in this first equation. It's in the second equation, it's in the third equation. So what I can do is I can rearrange this equation here. And I can get I1 by itself. 
so I can say I1 is equal to 6 minus 7 I3 over 3 put each one over 3 so I took the 3 I1 to the other side became positive and then rearranged and divided by 3 I2 I2 is equal to well let's have a look that's going to equal 9 minus 7 I3 over 5 Uh, I took the 9 to the other side, it became a positive. I took a 7i3 to the other side, it became a negative, and I divided by 5. So now I look at this first equation, and I say, well, in that case then, i1, which is 6 over 3, plus, uh, let's do it this way, plus minus 7i3 over 3. And I did 2. Let's look at i2. 9 over 5 plus minus 7 i 3 over 5 is equal to, don't forget this i 3, i 3. Let's find a common denominator is 15. 5 times 6 is 30 over 15 plus uh, let's, let's, I've changed my mind. Let's just put that as minus uh, 5. It's going to be 35 I3 over 15 plus multiply by 3. 27 over 15 multiply uh, top and bottom by uh, 3 minus 21 i3 over 15 equals multiply top and bottom by 15 i3 over 15 all these 15s go away I'm running out of space but I'll do my best so then I get well let's take the 30 and the 27 to the other side that uh, no let's take our i3s to the other side so 30 plus 27 is 57 and that equals well it's going to be 15 plus 21 is 35 36 plus 35 is equal to 71 i3 so I3 is equal to 57 over 71 and this equals let's put our calculator on 57 divided by 71 is equal to uh, plus 0 0.8 amps now so what this is saying is I'm getting 0 0.8 amps flowing through the 7 ohm resistor. That's what I wanted. And the positive sign says I picked the right direction. By chance, I picked the right direction for my current. If I had picked the wrong direction for my current, I'd have had a negative sign there. I could change the directions of the currents, and my answer would still work out in the end. I could change my loop directions and the answer would still work out in the end. These choices don't affect the final answer. All they do is they affect the signs that you get in the equations. Maybe one thing that's a positive becomes a negative and all the negatives become positives. It's the way it plays the game. So don't be fearful about making a bad decision about the loop direction. It doesn't matter. And don't even be fearful about making a bad decision about the current directions. It doesn't matter. As long as your current directions that are drawn match the equation. I could have reversed the direction of I3 and had it also pointing to the junction. 
so that all three currents go to the junction. And as long as I wrote down I1 plus I2 plus I3 equals zero, that would have been right. I would have continued with my problem, and in the end, I would have got the same answer. But how many times do you have a question where you've got to decide on so many things at the beginning, and that's the uncomfortable thing. But just embrace it, and uh, people do well on this question. There we have it.